Okay, let's actually do something with Particle Playground here so we can figure out what's going on. Now, we have shut down our fireworks here. We have a new empty composition to work with. And as you can see, it has nothing in it, basically. So what we need to do is add a solid layer to apply Particle Playground to. Particle Playground is an effect, and like all effects, it needs to have a layer to be applied to of some sort. And that could be a video layer or something like that, but it doesn't make any sense to do that because Particle Playground is just going to wipe out that layer. So we might as well just use a solid. We can go up to the Layer menu and choose New Solid. We could type Command Y. We can also just right-click down here in the timeline, choose New, New Solid, which is what we're going to do. And again, it doesn't matter what the color of this actual solid is. Let's, we can make it bright blue if we want because once we apply Particle Playground to it, that solid is going to just go away. So it can be anything you want, black, blue, pink, whatever. So with that selected, we're going to go up to our Effect menu and choose Simulation. Again, Particle Playground is in the Simulation subset here in the Effect menu, and Particle Playground. So as you see, it went away. The blue solid went away, or at least the blueness of it went away. And now we have these particles which actually have, we haven't started up yet, but essentially now we have an alpha channel here in which the particles are going to appear so that this could be then composited onto other things, which we'll do later, later on. Now, if we simply hit the space bar and play this back, you can see that what we get here is a kind of interesting sort of fountain almost of little square red particles that are flying up in the air a certain distance and then being pulled down into the bottom of the frame. And as you can see, what we're doing here is we're just doing a RAM preview at this point. So now it's playing at full speed. And with that playing, we can see that without having set a single keyframe, we already have this simulator in motion. And we have something that has an interesting sort of organic look to it, a natural look to it. Again, this is one of the, one of the great strengths of a simulator like this, of a particle system like this is that without doing anything on our own, we already have these kinds of natural procedures built into how these particles work. We have some gravity, we have some force being applied to those particles, the particles are kind of spreading out, and if you look at the particles as they flow down the screen, you can see that they're all kind of following individual paths. Without us having to do anything at all in terms of setting up keyframes or anything like that, we already have something that has a kind of a natural organic look. And that, of course, is one of the characteristics of a simulator particle system like this. Now, while that's running, let's open up Canon here. And that stops the animation, it stops the uh, RAM preview. And look at some of the properties in here. We have basically two generators of particles in here. We have Canon and we have Grid. Grid is something that we'll be using a lot later on when we start working with text-based particle animation. But Canon is the one that we're going to take a look at first, and that's the one that comes on by default. And you can see that there are a bunch of properties here, all of which are kind of physics-related in a sense. We have position of the origin of the particle stream itself, right there in the center. That's the position point right there in the center of the particle stream. So-called barrel radius which is the width of the barrel that stuff is shooting out of the cannon from. Particles per second, the number of particles that are being generated, the direction of those particles, the certain amount of randomness being interjected into that, and so forth. You can also see that there's a gravity property down here which will affect those particles that are being generated by cannon. In fact, I should mention that there are a couple of different categories of properties in here in Particle Playground that uh, we should discuss here right at the moment. So the cannon, the grid, the layer exploder, and the particle exploder, these things that are in the top of the window here, are all things that generate particles in one way or another. Cannon and grid will generate particles from scratch, and the layer exploder and the particle exploder generate particles from existing content already. Now the things down here below that, we have the layer map, gravity, repel, wall, and these two things here, somewhat mysteriously labeled persistent property mapper and ephemeral property mapper, are all things that modify 
particles that are being generated by these things up here in the upper part of the window. So these are modifiers of particles down here, and these are generators of particles up here. So first of all, let's just change some of these properties and see what happens when we do so. And we will do that in our next video.